Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of VGA PR Garage. Today we're working on this 2014 Lexus. Let's get that to focus. Maybe it'll focus. Come on. This is going to be a crappy intro. GS350. So we're going to be replacing the lower ball joint on this car. And oh, one symptom is noise. The other one is grabbing the wheel and going back and forth. Normally this is tie rod, but the tie rod in this vehicle is obviously on this side because there's the caliper. But when you pull on the wheel, the movement is more towards the bottom. But then when you use this way, which would normally be ball joint, you get very little play as for this side is where you're really feeling all the play. So we're obviously going to take the wheel off and uh, go from there. So this is the part we're after. This lower ball joint here. You might be able to see there's a little bit of uh, wetness right here. And that's where there's a tiny hole. A little bit of grease is coming out. Well, I'll move it for you. Hopefully you can see how much movement and play and sound we have in there. So we've got two bolts at the bottom. I don't know what they are, but I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> They're not 17s, tell you that much. Are they 18s? <laughs> no, let's try 19s. They're 19 millimeter. So we wanna be able to drop this down. The other thing, and I haven't done this repair, so we're walking through this together. I might have to remove the strut mount bolt for the bottom. Um, and I also might have to further up is the sway bar link. Actually, you can see right there, the sway bar link connection. To be able to get this control arm down enough to be able to get this bolt off. But let's go ahead and start off by removing the bottom bolt and see what kind of access we get. Those are big bolts. There we go. So in theory, I don't think we have to remove too much because now we actually have access to that bolt. I'm going to go ahead and grab something to try and swing this whole assembly out of the way. So now that I have that up and kind of out of the way, we're going to go ahead and pull uh, the cotter key. So I'm gonna keep, I love this style of cotter key, um, and use again. It's so great because you can reuse them and they don't rust out because they're stainless steel. So we're gonna wanna pop this out and not lose it. Watch me fling it across the garage floor. Or maybe I should get a better tool to do it with. Luckily, all this can be edited out, so I'm the editor. First try. Yeah, never a problem. Pop that out. Come on, Cotter Key. Oh, this one's really. Really stuck in there. Oh, well, maybe it might get destroyed. Yeah, you're destroyed. Whatever. Are you recording? Good. This is not how you take out these cotter keys. Why aren't you just popping out like the other ones do? Normally these just come, they literally just pop right out, but for some reason this one is a little bit of a bitch. Oh, demonetized, damn it. 
Might as well stop recording. What is going on here? Yeah, normally these these just pop right out. They don't normally do that. All right, so we're gonna have a bit of a problem here because this is moving very freely, that bolt, and we need to be able to undo that bolt. So I think we're gonna have to stick a pickle fork underneath here to apply pressure um, so that that bolt will not move freely. So it is a lot easier if you remove the tie rod. Um, it's just a 17 millimeter bolt. Um, right here and it's got one of those really cool cotter keys that Toyota uses. Um, I'll have to find it because now I don't know where it is. But anywho, this gives us a lot of room to move this around so we get a nice straight shot onto this. Um, so we know that it is a 19 millimeter. Let's see if we can get it without having to put an attachment on. So we can get to it like that. Let's undo this. So we had a feeling that was going to happen. So let's go ahead and grab the pickle fork and uh, hammer it in so we can get some leverage. Pickle, pickle, pickle fork. So we take the pickle, por pickle fork. Hopefully this is a big enough pickle fork. All the grease just squirted out. Knew we were going to have this problem. Let's try it again. So, this is a bummer. Because of what it's doing, it's turning in this. That really sucks. We're gonna try cleaning out some of the grease um, to get it to stop pushing the pickle fork out. So I want to break the rust bond between the bolt and the ball joint. So I'm going to heat this up. Um, I also have a spray bottle nearby in case there's a fire, so don't freak out. Spray it down, quench it down with water. And go back at it again. Punch it down with water. Let's see what that does. We're gonna go back in with the pickle fork. Back in there. Tappy tap tap. Get on this. And that did not work. So this is going to be a bugger to get out. We also have the option of just cutting the nut off with a cutoff wheel or going in here with some vice grips and trying to hold that with vice grips. And I think we might try that before we try um, 
the um, the cutting it. This cutting is going to take time. So let's grab some vice grips. I'm sure Toyota has a beautiful tool to do this job. We're gonna get in here and try to get, keep the vice grips off the rubber. We wanna get it on the ball joint. Let's tap this in there. See if we can squeeze on it. Almost, almost. Let's see how tight that is. There we go, we got it. So that's what I had to do to get to it. It's not what I want to do. Okay, I was worried that that hole looked wallered out. It didn't. So it seems to me what happens is, if you look at this, we also have a little thing that we have to get off. Um, that goes up inside there uh, to be able to make this whole thing work. So I gotta figure that out. Oh, I don't have to figure it out, it just came off. It, it just came off. So that actually fits up in there and then the ball joint goes in there. So let me go ahead and clean this up. So we have our new part, which is, can you see the part number? There you go, that's the part number. This is one of the premium versions. Uh, price will be listed down below. The problem with this part is, is this is the bolt it comes with. This piece, uh, I don't know what a, a spacer, goes up through here, okay? This bolt is so small, the diameter, that even if we bolt this up, the whole thing can pop out. The, like, this can get worn away and it'll come out. As where the bolt that comes with it fits right inside this cup. So you have to reuse that bolt. I would not recommend using this bolt. It's, it's or I keep saying bolt, this nut. It's, it's the wrong size. This is gonna get worn away and the whole thing will be able to drop out. I, I would not use it. You need the surface to go on the control arm, not just on this washer. So that's my recommendation. Take it with a grain of salt. Um, I need to grab some fluid film. So to keep this from getting stuck, I know this is aluminum, I still am going to. I'm gonna spray some fluid film down in here. There we go, we're gonna take the new part. There's arrows on it that are pointing the direction it should go, which is weird because the arrows are pointing in towards the vehicle. You'd think that arrows would point out, well whatever, what do I know? I'm an engineer. So then we're gonna take this nut, <laughs> this nut and tighten that on. And I'm hoping, to be honest with you, I need to clean these threads. So let me take this bolt off and clean these threads up so that we don't have issues tightening this down. So I'll be right back. All right, so I just took a wire brush and got on the inside of the this bolt or nut. It's a nut. I know. Now we're gonna go in here and put that on there. It goes on a lot easier. Now we're gonna tighten it up. We wanna make sure, see we got some movement there. We really don't want movement. It's getting tight, good. We got no movement. That sound you're hearing is this, but no movement on that. So now we need to take the whole steering knuckle and lift it up over this. And I hope my head's not in the way. And 
it'll fit down in because there's like, um, what do you call those? I don't know. It'll fit down in. Now we want to hand tighten these bolts in first a little bit before we go wrenching on it. Remember these are the 17 millies. Got one. Actually, these weren't 17 millis. I think these were 19 millis. I don't know what I'm doing. Where am I? Yeah, these were. These are definitely. Nope, 21 mils. Man, I should shut up. They're not 21 mils. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't listen to me. Look at the, dis the little thing in the description to know what it is. And you know what? Because this part's so bad, I'm probably going to speed right through it. There we go. It is a 19 mil. Alright. There we are. We got the next one. Well, let's make sure... We don't have any up and down play at all. So now, so now we want to reinstall our tie rod end. So we go ahead and put it back into the knuckle. We got our bolt that I cleaned out the threads with a wire wheel. And go ahead and button this bad boy up. And then we want to take this awesome cotter pin, pop that in. My favorite thing in the world. Some fluid film, fluid film down in there. And as we can tell, let's see if we can get a little bit of, we got nothing, no play. Nothing at all, nothing's happening. So that's how you replace the lower ball joint on a all wheel drive um, Lexus GS350. Um, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, uh, let me know why comments and questions put them down there in that section i get back to everybody and if you like these videos and want to see more hit that subscribe button which is right around there if you want to get notifications please ring that bell all right clean your tools off guys and i'll see you next time bye